In this video, we'll be going over default chart settings. This is the second video. If you have not seen the first video, please refer to that video first. So let's click on Configure, Preferences, Chart, Chart Settings. Let's start with the second column, as the first column was already covered in the first video. We have the maximum linear bar settings. This is the maximum number of bars to load when opening a chart. And this, of course, would be for linear bars, such as anything based on time, intraday, for example, like one hour, five minutes, 30 minutes, or even daily or monthly. Then we have the max nonlinear bars. And this is the maximum number of nonlinear bars, such as range and Renko, to load when opening a chart. So these are the defaults. This is 15,000. We also have the maximum days for tick charts. So in this case, if we have 10 enabled, you're going to be able to go back 10 days worth of tick charts, provided that your broker or data provider, that their tick data goes that far back. And the reason why you may not want this is, depending who your broker is or your feed is, it can take a very long time to load, and you may not need to go back that far. So you may save yourself um, some waiting time by disabling that, okay? The minimum bars is the minimum bars to load when opening a chart. So in this case, uh, the zero is a default here, um, but this would be the maximum and this would be the minimum. So if you're running, uh, for instance, some studies that go back and need a lot of historical data there, you may want to force this to a minimal amount of bars. The pop-up delay, this is in seconds, if it's enabled, you'll have a pop-up delay. And what that is, is if you hover over, for instance, a bar, we wait two seconds, and then we get the pop-up. If we go back, chart, chart settings, and we may find that intrusive, we can just take that off, and then it no longer pops up. Let's go back. Chart, chart settings. Of course, you can always change the time here if you want a slower delay or a faster delay. You can change that as needed. We got bar width. So let's say we were to change that to 50. Click apply. OK. Let's bring up a new chart. Let's bring up Tesla. You'll notice here that the bars are wider. So we go back. And then, of course, we can also control the spacing between the bars. So if we wanted more spacing, uh, let's try 20. You'll notice here we have a lot more spacing. Of course, this is going to affect the bar width. Um, but if we made this smaller, we should get more of a gap, less of a gap, and wider bars. And that's what we get. OK, we have the price axis spacing, the time axis spacing, as you make changes here you'll notice the changes will be reflected in the price axis. So if I click Apply, there's a spacing there. The same applies for the time axis down here. And now you notice there was a change. Now we have top inset and bottom inset in pixels, and that's the amount of pixels from the top price bar to the top of the chart, and then the bottom of the price bar to the bottom of the chart. So if we were to make this, um, let's say, larger, uh, larger, let's set this back to what it was before. I think this was 6. I think this was 2. Let's put all these back here. Let's click Apply. Let's bring up a new chart. And you'll notice now there's a wider gap here of 150 pixels there and at the bottom here. So let's go back. Chart, chart settings. So that's top inset, bottom inset. Then we have display bars. And this is the percentage of bars to display when first opening a chart. So for instance, if this was set to 90%, then the bars would fill 90% of the chart and probably come out to here. But let's give that a try. IBM, and you'll see it's filled 90% here. If we go back, 
And if we were to do, let's say, 50%, apply, OK, and then open up a new chart. And it doesn't matter what we open here. Now you have 50% empty space and 50% display bars. OK, so that's that option there. We also have the study height. If I were to make this smaller, let's say 90 pixels to get a better representation, let's try bringing this up. You'll notice the height here is 90 pixels. If I were to remove this, go back and do something a bit more, let's say drastic, 200, and then bring it up. You'll notice it's a lot higher. OK, let's go back, chart. So that's study height. We have study layout. This is the layout preference for the study labels displayed in the legend area, horizontal or vertical. Then we have the time zone. You can pick a specific time zone. You have use default. If you use default, it'll pick up the time zone that you currently have in your system. Um, and then we have calendar days. If this is enabled, space will be preserved for non-training days when displaying daily bars. So if I were to go, let's remove this, and let's select daily bars. You'll notice here, let me find one. Here, from June 28th to July 1st, there's a gap. If we go back, and turn on calendar days. Now if we go back to June 28th, you'll notice here that you have two spaces for the calendar days, even though there was no trading on those days. Okay, and that's it for this video. See you in the next.